Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to talk in our series on basic sociology. We are going to talk specifically on sociology of health and medicine and for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios Dr. Arshna Prasad. Dr. Arshna Prasad is Assistant Professor in Department of Sociology, Kamla Nehru College, University of Delhi. Dr. Prasad has immense experience and through the life platform of CEC, she believes to deliver, to give the best to the students so that the student community is benefited as a whole. Now let's welcome our guest Dr. Rachna Prasad and let's try to understand today's topic in detail. Hello ma'am, welcome to the lecture. Thank you Gitika and welcome back to the series of basic sociology. Today I am going to talk on a very interesting uh, subject which uh, affects all of us and we need to try to understand the whole idea of the fact that we all fall ill and we all have some kind of disease and sickness and it's very important to understand how a body is going to function in a time when there are so many issues which are not necessarily based on medicalization or it's not necessarily an outcome of a physiological problem in our body. For instance, the whole idea of depression is not only a physiological problem, or it's not only a mental problem, but also related to the way in which we rea relate ourselves to the society or how we expect something in return and we are not getting the expectation and therefore we feel lo lost, left out or alienated and it's uh, uh, a problem which has become a part of modern industrial uh, society. Similarly, we have other uh, problems related to our physiology and health. For instance, we also have the problem uh, of, say, cardiac arrest, or we have problems related to certain organs of our body which are not necessarily any longer concerned to be only a physiological or biolog biological problem. And therefore, the whole uh, notion that uh, only people or elderly people would suffer from a cardiac arrest is no longer valid where we see young and uh, even children facing because it's more of how the society is going to re return or how you are go one is going to be related to the society in which our overall health de uh, depends. So with this whole idea of looking into how sociology has contributed to the way we look into sickness, illness, disease, trying to understand the conceptual clarity among them and also trying to understand how as a discipline medical sociology has contributed to an overall understanding of not only the way in which we try to understand the relation between society and health but also try to con contribute it to more broadened way of understanding issues like mental illness, like disability which is no longer uh, considered to be something which can only be solved by visiting a physiologist or a, a, a physician and therefore it is important to trace the genesis of the discipline in, in uh, over a period of time and also look into the uh, way in which it has tried to conceptualize or problematize some of the problems that we face. So as uh, uh, the, the lecture consists of two parts, in the first part I'll try to understand uh, the whole idea of what is sociology of health and medicines. I'll look into some of the major concepts and the distinction between disease, illness, sickness. We look into the process of concepts like medicalization and then we look into the how disease, illness has uh, been understood from a social constructionist perspective and therein bring in about the contribution made by uh, sociologists in terms of functional analysis, conflict analysis, uh, inter symbolic interactionism and uh, also the postmodern debates on uh, medicine and health. In the second part of the lecture, I will be looking into some of the major concerns which is uh, central to our uh, medical sociology uh, uh, and that is to look into how the whole understanding of mental illness has been elaborated and broadened, how we look into the whole idea of disability and disability uh, or mental illness are not to be considered as isolated phenomena to be understood only with reference to the physiology of an individual but keeping in mind that social is always collective, we try to understand how disability can be understood as part of the uh, body uh, impairment and also how with an impairment the individual can be a part of the society and that brings us to whole understanding of inclusive education, inclusiveness or, or, of how we can bring about the uh, differently abled person into the mainstream uh, society and 
that also help uh, will bring into understanding of certain stereotypes, assumptions, stigmas attached to illness. And, uh, and we all, uh, will also look into another problem of health and medicines that is HIV AIDS, uh, which actually brings out a try to ha understand how the relation between individual and collective gets negotiated and restructured because of a certain kind of understanding about a particular illness. And then we also try to understand the relation between gender and health, gender and inequality, try to look into the uh, health care system and uh, if time permits, we'll look into the health policies and the way in which health care system functions in the Indian context. So to, it's a, a basically uh, captures a broad uh, uh, area of trying to uh, put in place uh, how the understanding of sociology has elaborated the understanding of the interrelation between society and the health. So let me going back to the whole idea of uh, what is my uh, sociology of health is to try to understand that for a very long time there was a certain one way of trying to understand what uh, is uh, illness or uh, sickness and that was only trying to understand in the sense of a biological disorientation uh, and that is certain kind of an assumptions which the sociologists were trying to question and the first question was that health and illness is not an individual problem. It might be that the uh, sickness or the, the problem is found in one particular body but that actually it reflects upon the way in which actually it affects the relation with others in the family, in the uh, workplace, in the neighborhood and large number of diseases which were considered to be contagious were also trying to uh, isolate and discriminate the people who had certain kind of uh, uh, malfunctioning from the rest of the society and this they're trying to understand that health is more collective and is a social problem rather than a only a medical problem is uh, one of the main concern of sociology. Then the second is that illness is outcome of medical problem with a biological cause. So we always try to understand the illness is something which is trying to affect a functioning of a body and that cannot necessarily only be re restricted to a certain biochemical disorder but it is also in the way in which people respond uh, to it. The third assumption questioned by sociologists is that only medical practitioners can cure the disease and this is something which actually Actually, we see that with, uh, with the modernity and with the modern urban way of life, we see that there are large number of alternate medicines which has come into practice, which is through healing, through meditation, through yoga, which people are not necessarily going to a doctor or to a clinic to actually get diagnosed and get well. And also, it is also to, in terms of now, there is a kind of an understanding that the social environment is more contributory to the way in which the body functions than rather just the physiology of an individual. So that implies, to that, uh, that implies the sociologists are not concerned with the fact or not trying to answer the question why people fall ill. But they are trying to understand that if uh, people fall ill, how are the society going to react to it, how the individual is going to come out of that illness because of certain uh, antagonistic feeling or due to or certain kind of acceptance by the rest of the society and therefore it is more looking into the societal causes of illness. And that comes to the whole understanding the cause of illness is the outcome of the way in which society is organized. We see large amount of illness is coming out because of the certain uh, way in which we live our life. And that also brings us to whole understanding of certain disease or certain illness which were not there in the earlier period in the uh, kind of uh, emerging in terms of, uh, in terms of trying to understand the changes that the society is undergoing and therefore we also have the whole understanding of lifestyle diseases which is a reflection of the changing urban lifestyle. And then we also need to understand uh, uh, or sociologists have focused specifically to the understanding of the intersectionality that the illness of an individual or the fact that a disease is more a kind of uh, uh, outcome of the social structures in terms of the uh, class, age, gender, ethnicity, race and there are certain uh, 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 
uh, expectations or there are certain experiences of uh, illness which is only a part of certain class, certain category of people, only may be experienced only by women and not by men and therefore the intersectionality becomes very significant. Then we also try to understand that medical knowledge is not always disinterested, objective scientific search for, but we, we also know that, that there are certain kind of medical knowledge which are not based on scientific rational thinking but could be come out through uh, understanding of folklore and custom and therefore we also have the whole idea of folk, uh, folk, uh, folk, uh, rural based medical system or we have certain way of understanding the uh, society more in terms of the cultural practices rather than just scientific rational knowledge. Then we try to understand the sociological approach emphasizes how society or a culture is going to shape the outcome of its uh, health, uh, illness and practices and therefore we try to see that for a very uh, a long time people with certain kind of ailments were considered to be uh, isolated or dissegregated from the uh, idea from the society because it carried certain kind of stigma, it carried certain type of stereotyping and therefore it was very important to come out or to do away with these assumptions so that they could become a part of the society. In particular, culture shapes a society perception of what it means to be healthy or ill. So if there is a lot of labeling of certain kind of behavior considered to be abnormal and the society attaches a lot of negative value to it, then the, uh, the experience of an individual of sickness or disease will be more prolonged. And if there is a positive attitude of the, uh, the environment is such that certain kind of dis, uh, dysfunction of the body is considered to be only a kind of a temporary phase, then the response of the body as well as the individual is greater. So for sociologists, the experience of sickness and disease is the outcome of the organization of society. Sociology of health and medicine examines the relationship between social structure and the production and distribution of health and disease. This is something which I have already discussed. They demonstrate how it's all a question of class, it in terms of power, in terms of gender, ethnicity, and not only in terms of uh, the experience of illness, but also your access to healthcare system is uh, kind of affected. And that is why we see that if we are from a lower class and our environment is not hygienic, the water which is consumed is not uh, up to the mark, then certain kind of uh, illness like diarrhea, typhoid are more pro uh, problematic among the poor than among the rich uh, uh, class. Then we also need to make a distinction between two kinds of uh, contribution of sociology to health and medicine. One is sociology of in medicine and the second is sociology of medicine. Sociology in medicine actually focuses on answering the questions that doctor consider useful. So it's a from, it's a from a doctor's perspective and therefore it will actually uh, try to uh, provide suggestions or ways in which the advice of the doctor or the prescription given by the doctor is actually followed by the patient. So this is the sociologist therefore plays a role of actually becoming an interpreter between the doctor and the patient. Whereas sociology of medicines actually questions the position of an individual in the social structure and it could be that the choice of following the advice of the doctor or not following the advice of the doctor is not necessarily the individual's uh, choice or perception but it is related to the structure into which one belongs and therefore it could be that one is not following the prescription, is not taking their medicines because of certain emotional stress, because of lack of cooperation by the family, family friends, relatives, also could be because of the financial instability where the individual or the person who is sick is not able to actually purchase the medicine which is required to for, uh, or which has been prescribed by the doctor. Then we try to understand some ways, basic concepts in uh, health and medicines and the first concept is obviously health. Now health for a very long time was considered as a phys physiological dysfunctioning of a society but through international organizations, through uh, organizations like WHO which has given a very broad and prescribed definition of health that it is an overall com uh, uh, complete uh, physical, mental, emotional, all elements, psychological well-being of an individual. So it can be that body uh, physically has no problem but emotionally you are feeling uh, uh, sick 
or psychologically you are not feeling uh, uh, attached to the society. So that becomes a question of not being healthy. So then we also have the concept of medicines, which is any substance or substances used to recover from certain kind of a disease. And these are generally in terms of the prescribed by the doctor in a very uh, medical terms. Then we also need to differentiate between disease and illness. Now, disease is a medical conception of a pathological condition's abnormality, that is the functioning of the body or the functioning of organs of, uh, in our body, internal, external organ, is not in the required manner. And therefore, it is uh, uh, categorized as disease. Now, illness is broader than the disease. Illness implies subjective interpretation of the problem that are perceived as health related. That is the social experience of symptom. So the illness, uh, uh, a person, uh, for instance, mental illness, is that if a, a person who is uh, who is considered to be a mentally mentally ill is a person who does not follow the norms which are prescribed as. Uh, correct in a particular society or is not doing a certain kind of work in the way it has been suggested. So that is only a not a necessarily an outcome of the physiological ailment in the body, but it is a perception of the society which considers a particular kind of behavior as mental, mentally, uh, mental illness. Then we also have the concept of sickness. Sickness implies social organization and performance of illness and disease. And this sickness is, uh, is the whole idea that the person, because of certain kind of physiological ailment, is not able to do the uh, or not able to perform his task in society, or is not able to perform the role which has been assigned to him, and therefore he is considered, uh, or he or she is considered, as uh, uh, a person with a sick role. Then we also have the whole idea of disease being certain based on uh, dysfunction of the organ. Whereas illness is experience of disease such as subjective experience, disorder, feeling of pain and discomfort. Many a time physiologically we feel where we have no disease but we are ill because we are not actually being part of the social system. Disease suggests a biological altered state whereas illness relates to diffuse consequence of the disease process. So people, uh, when you feel ill, we go to a medical advice to a doctor from where the, 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 the disease is diagnosed and the doctor prescribes a treatment. And the treatment actually legitimizes the illness or the role of the patient in the society. So when if the, treat, uh, the sickness is of lesser significance in terms of the medical uh, language, then the person is considered to be uh, a part of the society and something which is actually going to fun impact the functioning of a larger part of the society, then the person is considered as a sick. Can, one can be ill, suffer from disease without adopting a sick role. So then we come to the concept of medicalization. This is taken for granted assumption that whenever there is a certain kind of a dysfunctioning of the society, is it an outcome of a physiological or a biological defect in our body? And therefore, we need to uh, uh, get to the doctor. This is basically a medical model of understanding health and illness. And later, we'll see with, in contrast to the medical model, the sociologist has offered a social model of uh, 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 health and illness, where we try to understand the uh, uh, interrelation between society and the aspect of falling ill or uh, suffering from a disease. That is, most of us think that sick or disease is straightforward a physical e event. But whereas we will we try to understand large number of problems or disease in our society is not necessarily an outcome of the defect in our society, uh, but also out of come of the way in which society responds to it. It helps us to only understand those acute problems which is actually based on medical conditions. Sociologists help us to disease and illness beyond medical model and as related to the social environment. Disease and illness is both biological product and the outcome of social arrangement. So then coming back to the whole idea of social construction, which I have already said that there is a certain particular way in which uh, uh, till the, uh, for a very long time medical uh, med health and illness was considered as a physiological biological product. With the coming in of the sociologists, there is a social constructionist uh, uh, approach which tries to construct uh, the health and illness 
from a perspective of the society. And that could be in terms of certain variables affecting the health and illness, that is class, gender and ethnicity. Medical knowledge is also not only scientific, but it emerges from the culture and large part of uh, the way in which norms are perceived. So sociologists over a period of time have given us a different perspective and uh, way those uh, different aspect of uh, society has been focused into understanding the problem of health and illness. For Marxists, they will be looking into the way in capitalized society has actually led to a distinction between the poor and the rich uh, class where the poor uh, are more suffering from disease and illness compared to the uh, lower uh, upper class. Then we have a feminist perspective which will look into the whole idea of medical uh, fraternal institutions, medicines as well as the aspect of falling ill from a very gendered perspective in terms of how the uh, gender roles are assigned uh, uh, because of women's having been assigned the role of domestic sphere, the problem of reproductive health, the uh, whole idea of fertility, infertility, and the way in which this structure of uh, patriarchy affects the way in which we perceive uh, women's health. Then we also have the whole idea of ethnic approach where we look into the role of race and racism, and then we will be looking into the uh, current scenario where we try to put in a large amount of uh, body and power in the context of understanding health and illness. Looking into the development of the discipline, we see that until 19th century, study of health and illness, that is, it was only sociology in medicine. They were only trying to un interpret what the society, uh, the medical pra uh, practitioner were advising for the society. And there was a lack of a social model for understanding disease and healthness. It was only in the 1956-60s uh, 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 that the uh, coming in of the Black Report in the United uh, Kingdom where there was an attempt to interpret between the health and inequality that medical sociology at, uh, actually emerged and there was attention paid to the whole idea of how stratification system reflects on the disease that the society suffers from. So there are basically three periods in which the emergence of the discipline can be categorized. The first is from 1956 to 1970 which is period of the golden age which is considered a very uh, uh, status quo where the people like Talcott Parson were looking into the way in which social system was uh, functioning in a certain way and where disease was considered as something which was dysfunctional and therefore he came up with the uh, concept of sick role. Then from 1917 to 89 it is, is described as a period of maturity where medical sociology emerged as a mature uh, sociological sub-discipline. And then from 1990s onward, we see the whole idea of how the symbolic interactionism has come in, how the discourse perspective, how, how Foucault has looked into the way in which uh, uh, the way in which uh, modern society is trying to uh, compli uh, understand uh, health and medicines. And then we try to understand some of the contribution to the discipline where we see from the very early as 1968 with Gunan Midril's uh, work on Asian drama where he was looking into the economic and uh, aspect of the growth of uh, development of nation. He was trying to understand the two-way relation between health and the economic uh, political development of a nation where he said health impacts the way in which the nation dev national development is affected and the vice versa. Then following Gunnar Midril and the most core contribution to the sociology of health and medicine was Talcott Parsons' work, The Social System, in which he demonstrated the ro uh, role of medicine and society and he recognized the doctor-patient relationship as a social system built upon Imhai Durkheim's interest in the societal norms, structures and processes. So both Imhai Durkheim and Talcott Parsons actually belong to the functionalist school who were, who were trying to understand the functions performed by certain institutions towards the maintenance of the societal norm. And within that, Imhai Durkheim has worked suicide, discussed uh, the uh, um, the way in which the uh, individual's interrelation with the acceptance of certain norms or uh, the way in which individual integrates in the society, society leads to the problem of suicide. He provided a psychosociological uh, understanding of a problem which was considered as medical and that is the, his, uh, his book on suicide try to understand the different ways in which uh, individual and certain uh, society has a higher rate of suicide because of the lack of integration of individual in the society. 
Ralkit Parson's work on sick, sick role gave medical sociology a place in the mainstream sociology, but it was Eliot Fredson who gave the medical sociology its critical dimension. So there was a shift from functional perspective to the critical perspective where we are trying to look into the way in which professions, doctors and the medical fraternity functions in order to create a kind of a, a disharmony or uh, further exaggerate the social inequality existing in society. The next work was Profession of Medicines, which uh, defined the boundaries of medical sociology. It brought in a perspective of how sociological perspective on practice and profess professions of medicines as well as the health and illness could be examined. After Talcott Parson, we have the work of Merton, Becker and Goffman, who all pro provided a kind of an advancement to Talcott Parson's understanding of the social system and the sick role. Merton published his article in 1957 titled The Student Physician Extended. He applied the structure functional approach to understanding the way uh, uh, the process of socialization of medical students. Howard Becker, his associates, published the book Boys in White. And he also st uh, studied the whole idea of medical school socialization. They introduced a symbolic interactionist perspective to study of disease and illness as evident in large number of works. Then we also have Goffman's symbolic uh, contribution of uh, Goffman's work Asylum, which is basically a study of uh, institutions in which individuals lives are captivated and controlled and his, his, uh, he, con he presented the concept of total institutions which are closed worlds such as prisons, army, training camp, naval base, boarding schools, monasteries, nursing homes and mental hospital hospitals. Here the lives of inmates, that is people who are part of these institutions are regimented, they are controlled, they are under supervision, they are surrounded by other inmates and unable to leave the premise. So this whole idea of the institutions uh, directly impacts the physiological, mental and emotional development of those who are part of the uh, mental hospitals. He describes what these institutions make of the invent and what he or she can make of life inside them. So it is actually a kind of uh, uh, relations of dominance and subordinate. So those who his focus was on the mental uh, hospital. So the mental people who were uh, diagnosed with certain kind of mental illness were kept under a regimented uh, uh, regime in which their way, the behavior, the ev everyday aspects of their life was regulated by those who were considered as uh, practitioners or those who were in the administration and therefore the, uh, the, uh, there was a kind of a hierarchy which actually rather than solving or curing the problems of uh, illness would actually e aggravate the illness uh, that was suffered by the people. So basically, we uh, in, uh, uh, I have already discussed in this part of the lecture the way the whole idea of medical sociology, the how uh, important it is to understand health and medicines, try to understand the concepts and the genesis of the discipline of sociology of health and medicines. With this, I end this part of the lecture. Thank you. With this note, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us this uh, session on sociology of uh, health and medicine. Dear friends, there is a lot more for you. You are requested to be with us as we are back after a short break. Thank you.
Hello friends, welcome back to the session. Friends, as you know that today we are talking on sociology of health and medicine. And for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios Dr. Ashna Prasad. Dr. Ashna Prasad is Assistant Professor in the Department of Sociology, Kamla Nehru College, University of Delhi. Now we would like to welcome our guest, Dr. Prasad, once again and would request her to continue further. Hello ma'am, welcome back. Uh, thank you, Gitika. Welcome back to the second part of the lecture on basic sociology. And today I am discussing on the uh, whole uh, sociology of health and medicine. Continuing with the first part of the session, I, in the, this I begin with looking at basically looking into some of the contribution of uh, mainstream sociologists to the whole idea in which we uh, have tried to understand uh, health, disease, and illness. And to begin with, it, uh, begin with the whole idea of political economy and Marxist approach uh, because Karl Marx provided the basic understanding of uh, how economy formed the base for understanding the other aspects society and culture of the society and to a large extent whole understanding of political economy has been uh, done to understand how in a capitalist society it is even the accept of, uh, experience of health or sickness is associated to the basic structure which is the economy of the society so we try to understand the relation between the economic interest of a certain class that is the capitalist class in the way in which it actually controls and uh, uh, leads to the kind of uh, experience which is different so the definition on treatment of health and illness are influenced by the nature of economic activity in a capitalist society and even medicines to a large extent has been interpreted by Marxist uh, school as uh, institutions which serves the function in a capitalist society. And this is very something very easy to comprehend when we look into the way in uh, which uh, health care system is organized in an urban space like Delhi where we see that uh, the, uh, there is a wide distinction between the access to the healthcare system of the uh, capitalist class where we have certain uh, uh, services in the sense of medical uh, services of certain standard for the upper class and we have public funded in hospitals for uh, a class where even the access is difficult. So the medical, prof, uh, medical profession, the way in which medicalization, pharmaceuticalization has taken place, that there is a certain kind of uh, uh, medicines are produced by certain brands, by certain corporate structure, and therefore it is produced for consumption by a particular class. So medicines too becomes a kind of a distinction on the basis of class. It reflects characteristics of capitalism. It is prof profit oriented, blames the victims and reproduces cl class structure. So oh, 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 the full act of uh, experiencing illness, the categorization of disease and uh, illness uh, as well as the consumption of medical services is according to class, uh, class structure of society. Uh, Navarro, 1985, applied the uh, political economic uh, approach to understanding health and medicines and provides uh, four features that define medicines as capitalist. Uh, or that points to the invasion of a house of medicine by capital. The first is that medicine has changed from an individual craft or skill to corporate medicines. So even when we go to the doctors, the doctor prescribes certain medicines which are to be purchased only under certain brand. Uh, brand. So there is a kind of a nexus where there is a kind of a production of uh, uh, medicines by one class for the consumption of that particular class. So the rest of them are left out from the uh, consumption of certain medicines, certain services which are assumed to fall into the upper class. Second has become increasingly specialized and hierarchical. Third has extensive wage labor force. So there are a lot of uh, workers who are part of the uh, uh, these industries, corporate sector, 
But what is very interesting is that they are part of it, they are taking part in the production, but the consumption they are denied because they do not have the purchasing capacity to buy uh, medicines produced by big corporate houses. Fourth, medical practitioners has become proletarized, that is professional status has gradually been undermined as a result of administrative and managerial staff taking over responsibility for healthcare provision. So what uh, earlier in the earlier period it was that it was the doctors or the physicians who had control over the uh, sick people and there was a kind of a dominant doctor patient relation but by now because of the corporate sector entering into it lot of managements uh, professionals enter, entering to it they even the professional lives of the doctors are regulated by the corporate structure these four process means that medicines has become a market commodity to be brought and sold like any other product so it's no longer whole idea of human and social uh, is uh, uh, detached from it. So if medicines is a product which is not necessarily looked into an object that can cure a certain kind of impairment, but it is looked into as a product which can be purchased and consumed only at a certain price. So then the second approach in sociology of health and medicines is which I have already discussed in the first half of the lecture is the contribution of Talcott Parson. Talcott Parson gave us a structural functional understanding and this is completely different from Marxian perspective. Marxian perspective is considered to be a conflict uh, uh, a structure. Here he is saying uh, that it is not necessarily that medical profession is also always capitalized but they can be a non-capitalist motive as well and therefore he is trying to say that uh, good, and uh, good health and effective medical care are essential for social uh, functioning of the society. So uh, he is looking into as uh, people who are normal as having a healthy life who can contribute to the society. If you cannot contribute to the functioning of the society, then you would be labeled as a sick person. Health impairs our ability to perform our roles in society and if too many people are unhealthy, society functioning and stability suffers. This was especially true for premature death, said Parson, because it prevents individuals from fully carrying out all the social roles and thus represents a poor return to society. So uh, he is looking into disease as dysfunctional to the society because the number of people who are ill and uh, unwell should not be uh, uh, at any point of time large because that will affect the proper functioning of the society. Poor medical care is dysfunctional for society as people who ill face great difficulty in becoming healthy and people who are healthy are more likely to become ill. So in that context, if we look, therefore it becomes a, a priority of the society to ensure that medical care is provided to every individual so that no, uh, the number of people falling ill is less and the uh, functioning of the society or the societal survival is uh, sustained. He gave us the concept of sick role. He refers to four, Talcott Parson refers to four social norms regarding of how sick people should behave and how society would view them. The first is sick people are legitimately exempted from normal social responsibilities associated with work and the family. Second, sick, sick people cannot make themselves better, therefore they need professional help. So this also brings in the idea of the relation between the individual and the collective, that it is no longer an individual problem, it is something where you need an interaction, where you need a networking of other individuals. Sick people are obliged to want to get bit better. So being sick is considered as dysfunctional, it is considered as abnormal in society and therefore the desire to get uh, well or the, the desire to get back to work and become functional. And there is also a time in which the in, uh, society would respond positively. If an individual falls sick for a prolonged period, then the care and the attention given to the person also demises and therefore the ex expectation from the pers uh, sick person is to recover uh, quickly. Sick people are therefore expected to seek professional treatment because it is considered uh, uh, that uh, uh, the requirement of an individual is needed and therefore through professional uh, help the person is going to come back to the work. Then we also have the feminist perspective where the whole idea of patriarchy and the uh, subordinate relation of men and women become the central uh, uh, objective of un trying to understand health and disease. And here we see that medical 
uh, uh, system is a, considered as a patriarchal institution run by men and serves male interests. This falls into the whole idea in which the public domain belong to the men and therefore at one point of a time the larger uh, medical practitioners managements of hospitals were in the hand of men. Feminists explore the gendered nature of the definition of illness and treatment of patient. Its main concern is the way in which medical treatments involve male control over women's bodies and identity. Anne Oakley argued that women's life have been subject to far better control and regulations by medical professions than by uh, than have men's. Then uh, we'll come back to the whole idea of feminist perspective and we'll try to look into the relation between gender and health. But before that, let's look into the third perspective on med uh, sociology of health and medicine and that is discourse and power. Discourse and power is actually an uh, whole argument given, theory given in by Michel Foucault who concentrated on the dominant medical discourse which has constructed definition of normality and deviance. So there are certain ways in which there are certain knowledge system which actually tries to define who is a normal person and who is a sick person. Now this definition or, or the discourse is also kind of a, based on the power and hierarchical system of the society. The discourse provides subjects in modern society with a vocabulary through which their medical needs and remedies are defined. The source and beneficiary of the discourse in the medical uh, profession is coming in from certain uh, group of people who are legitimized to have the knowledge system. The Foucault's theory argue that medical discourse plays an important role in the management of individual's body what Foucault calls antimopolitics and the body's mass which is called biopolitics. Medicine is just about medicine it is as it is conventionally understood but also about wider structures of societies of power and control. He defined modern society as administered society in which professional group defined categories of people, the sick, the insane, the criminal, the deviant on behalf of an administrative store. So there is a kind of a categorization of people by the government, by the state and that will de define the way in which individual functions uh, in the society. Medicine is also a product of the administrative state, po uh, uh, policing normal behavior that is you try, uh, the state is uh, I, uh, categorizing who is supposed to be a normal and who is an uh, insane people and therefore the kind of behavior expected from these people is defined by the state. He is known for creating the concept of medical gaze, a phrase coined to signify the separation of patient's body from their identity. So he, the person who is in, uh, uh, suffering from certain kind of impairment becomes a subject of uh, gaze by the administrator and by the medical practitioner. So the whole, the, uh, the whole idea of the agency of the individual is lost and what becomes more significant, all these other identities are get submerged and what becomes more important in terms of negotiating relation in the behavior with the person is the uh, way in which uh, society perceives the illness of the body. The, the double system of observation is employed in order to properly diagnose the patient. There is also the whole idea of uh, not trying to have a very holistic understanding but a comp compartmentalized understanding of patient and his body is achieved there. The physician uses his knowledge to objectively observe the patient and look for telling signs in order to properly diagnose and treat whatever illness is ailing the patient. So it's a very kind of, of a bureaucratized administrative kind in which uh, if we see a mechanical way in which a, a person with an illness goes to the physician, the physician tries to observe certain symptoms and uh, 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 a certain observable sign by which he then categorize, uh, he or she categorizes the impairment as a certain kind of a disease and prescribes certain medicines for uh, 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 getting cured from it. Now depending on the identification of the disease, the uh, physician is also going to prescribe whether the individual is going to continue as a part of the society or is not fit for functioning in the society. 
So when we try to uh, now after the four uh, approaches and the perspective, I will now look into some of the major contribution in uh, understanding some of the uh, disease in the uh, society and one of them is the mental illness. Mental, il mental illness is difficult to define because of the way in which it has been perceived and co conceptualized in the uh, society. So, the whole identification of what actually constitute mental illness differs from one society to the other. These, this is whole idea in which how the society orients itself to the person who has a certain kind of Im impairment and the labeling or the understanding of certain kind of behavior as mental illness has ch uh, changed from uh, period to period. For instance, the whole idea of homosexuality in the 16th, uh, 17th, uh, even till the early 19th century was considered or conceived as a mental illness. But because of the uh, activist movement in um, uh, US and Francisco with the gay liberation movement, homosexuality is no longer considered to be a uh, kind of mental illness, but it is more considered as a choice of uh, 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 an alternate way of uh, uh, engaging in certain kind of uh, sexual uh, relation. So, if earlier if uh, a person was uh, found to be engaged in homosexual relation, he was sent to a, a psychiatrist and was prescribed certain medicines for coming out of it. But now there is a whole uh, movement which is going on in order to legalize the practice of homosexuality. And that is what is meant by trying to say that the whole understanding of mental illness illness varies from culture and from time to space. Some conditions that are considered as evidence of mental illness in some cultures are not necessarily uh, considered to be the same in the other cultures. Members of different culture may manifest different symptoms in response to same clinical uh, conditions. So, even the prescription of the, what is a behavior ex expected of a mental, uh, mentally ill person differs from society to society. There are three approaches to understand the etiology of mental illness. Etiology means the causes, medical causes of uh, mental illness. One is biogenic or physiological, which is the medical model. I already said in the beginning that we have two models. One is a medical knowledge, which is very close to the medical sciences, to the way in which health and illness is seen as an illness. And the second is the model which is more from the sociologist, which is trying to understand illness, disease as a part of the social environment. So, the first cause of mental illness is biogenic or physiological medical model. model. Illness is observable and measurable condition. So, it is a state of your uh, mind which is not going to follow certain norms and those observable symptoms are against the norms of the society. So, it is labeled as mentally ill. The second is Jenny environmental or the social approach. Definition of illness depends on subjective interpretation than objective. So, that is in terms of how the society is going to interpret the behavior of an individual, whether it is in accordance to the norm or against the norm, which is actually going to categorize it as a kind. Thoits gave an argument that the labeling of mental illness is applied when the behavior of an individual is inconsistent at three points. One is cognitive norms. That is the thinking of the individual is against the ascribed norms of the society. The performance is a norm that is the again the way in which the individual behaves in a society or the behavior of an individual is against the norms of society. And the third is feeling norms, that is the way in which individual experience certain kind of emotions is against the standardized pattern which is accepted as uh, normal in society. The third approach to understand mental, in, uh, mental illness is to combine the biogenetic, the physical model and the social environment and that is to arrive at an understanding that mental illness can be an uh, outcome of both uh, the uh, certain kind of impairment in the body, certain physiological or abnormality as well as the subject in, subjective interpretation of individuals in society. Uh, then we come on to the second uh, 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 core interest of medical sociologist is disability. Now, disability is uh, uh, of uh, various uh, kind where disability basically means that in an individual is not able to 
perform the same kind of function by his body uh, which is considered to be functional for the society. So it is again a phenomena which is socially defined and more uh, it is a physiological condition for instance a person is not able to have vision in his eyes could be a kind of, of a visual uh, uh, disability but then the way in which society structures the norms for a person who without sight is a subjective interpretation. So we need to actually differentiate between impairment and disability. Impairment is a bodily feature that represents a deficit in terms of sensory perceptions, mobility or physiological process. Whereas disability is restriction, that is because you have certain kind of impairment, you are not allowed to perform in the way you should actually be allowed to do. So it is an impairment which affects the performance of an individual. This distinction has central to the social model of disability which emphasizes how social, financial, physical and attitudinal uh, barriers make people differently able. And as I said in the beginning that the sociological approach has broadened our understanding of these uh, 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 impairment and disability in the sense. Now the whole idea is not only on trying to focus on the physiological deficit but it is to look into the individual as an agent, as an agency and therefore there is a whole idea or the debate which is going on in terms of making people with differently able people as part of the education system, inclusive education and the, uh, the rest. So it basically broadens the way in which we try to understand a certain kind of a behavior of individual as uh, uh, limiting to the performance of, and functioning of the society. So then we also have the whole understanding of HIV AIDS which is an infectious disease but it also helps us broaden our understanding of sociology of health and medicines because it's a kind of a disease which is also labeled as a social disease, it's also an occupational hazard because there's a lot of stigma, there's a lot of uh, uh, stereotyping of people who have uh, uh, certain uh, physiological impairment and it is also to a large extent to do with the way in which society has been structured in terms of the men and women relation which has actually led to the increase in and in, uh, in the uh, epidemic so they have uh, sociologists have advanced an, an uh, academic understanding of uh, hiv aids and they have actually interpreted government policies state uh, le level programs and community responses to the problem now uh, uh, keeping in mind that uh, health and uh, e uh, equality inequality that is health inequality and social inequality are to a large extent related it's important to understand HIV in terms of intersectionality between class, gender and race. That is certain kind of uh, uh, group uh, belonging to certain kind of class are subject to the uh, epidemic more than the rest of them. And also in terms of to look into the way in which because of certain kind of physiological defect, the person was discriminated, alienated from the rest of the society. So it is viewed as a social disease because of the many social causes and just to briefly mention them, these causes are migrant uh, nature of the workforce. They could be in terms of the marriage pattern, having polygamous marriage partner, easily leaving wives aside. Then the, also the problem of poverty and unemployment. And therefore, this is considered also the fact that for a very long time, people who were, were having HIV AIDS were actually removed out from their jobs and occupations and therefore it was considered as an occupational hazard. Another issue of illness and health is the problem of infertility and reproductive health which has become an important concern because of the way in which feminist understanding of uh, women's body has actually brought in a new light into understanding infertility and reproductive health from changing the cultural notion about infertility, trying to subordinate a woman because of the problem of uh, not being able to bear uh, children to the whole idea of uh, in vitro fertilization in which the repro uh, technology, science and technology has reinterpreted the experience of maternity and motherhood is uh, trying to add new dimension in the way in which we look into women's body, women's reproductive health and it helps us to question the relation between gender and health in the contemporary time. So studying infertility provides an ideal vantage point from which to study healthcare as inter-societal and cross-cultural disparity in healthcare. 
the relationship between identity and health and gender roles, the social cultural variation in the process of medicalization. And that is to try to understand the whole idea because uh, many a time it is uh, uh, it was assumed that since health is a biological physiological problem, it is an individual uh, uh, listic base and therefore had to do nothing with the society, uh, society or the social structure. Whereas when we look into the way in which health inequalities are actually manifested in the society, we see that the intersectionality of class, gender, ethnicity becomes very significant in try to have a more comprehensive understanding of disease and illness. So uh, uh, we I already talked about this in the first half that the health inequality dimension became relevant or became a part of the uh, uh, policy and planning in the 1980s when in the United Kingdom the black report was published. Now this black report was a study of stratify, stratification inequality health in the United Kingdom and it came out with the data that the prospect of death and length of life that is life expectancy was directly dependent on the social and economic position that is class. So uh, fr coming out from the perspective uh, of uh, uh, health being a class less uh, problem to the understanding of health being a class based problem become, became significant in the uh, planning and process. And therefore, it tried to help us to understand the way in which we look into the distinction between uh, class, race, ethnicity and uh, health. So we know that the race which is could be the distinction or the discrimination on the basis of the color of the skin could also become a point in which we actually differentiate the experience of illness among uh, people. So then we also try to look into the whole idea of uh, healthcare system in the which in today's time when we see there's a shift from uh, different types where we look into the uh, kind of folklore, uh, folk based medicines where we had certain medicines based on the cult cultural understanding of the society to the whole idea of West, uh, Western medicines to alternate medicines. We try to understand the healthcare system which is associated with the prevention and treatment and management of illness along with the promotion of mental and physical well-being through the services provided by the medical allied health professional. Now, the way in which actually modernity and the uh, neoliberal society functions has actually from trying to understand uh, disease and illness as uh, something which affects the normal functioning of the society to making it as a kind of uh, uh, profit making industry. So the healthcare system or the health uh, industry across the countries in the western society as well as the Indian society is today a big profit making society which has actually made the access to good health care denied to a larger mass of the uh, society and it is within that we try to look into the whole way in which uh, uh, private hospitals functions, the way in which insurance system functions to only ensure the consumption of medical care, health care system to a particular class of the society. And that is problematic because we need to have an understanding where every individual who has a certain kind of impairment needs to be looked into by the community, by the collectivity and by the state to come out of the illness and to become an active member in the society. Uh, with this, I come to an end to the lecture. Thank you. This note, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us this session on sociology of health and medicine. Dear friends, you might have queries, you might have your feedbacks for the lecture too. So do write to us at info.cc at nic.in. We are going to meet soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again. Thank you.